you know, as we were listening to that song, Hallelujah, Our God Reigns. There's going to come a day when we say, Hallelujah, we reign with you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a shift mm -hmm. in truly living from the throne that we reign with him and not just see him as reigning, mm -hmm. but see ourselves sitting on the throne with him. <clears throat> I'm going to open in Psalm chapter 8, a psalm of David. Really, you know, it even, it's really talking about reigning there or, or what Adam had in his reign. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, Hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? You have made him a little lower than the angels, Thou hast crowned him with glory and honor and did set him over the work of thine hands and have put all things under his feet. All the sheep and oxen, yea, the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Holy Spirit, we thank you for teaching us, for enlightening the eyes of our understanding, that we would lay hold of the fullness. We thank you for simplicity. That there would be no confusion just the simplicity of walking with you, Lord, in fellowship with you. Thank you for pulling all the pieces together. A lot of different directions I could go and just have to trust the Holy Spirit because it's kind of been showing me a lot of little things, but I can't say that I've pulled it all together <laughs> in any one thing, so I just have to trust what direction he wants to go. I could probably title it six different things, so um, I think I'll begin in, in John again, John chapter 17. once again was you know it's in some bibles it titles it his high priestly prayer of course christ was a high priest after the order of melchizedek <clears throat> and of course melchizedek brought forth to abraham bread and wine wine and bread or mercy and truth it's the order of melchizedek comes forth from the secret place from the throne and mercy, the throne is established, and he shall sit upon it in truth. And he brings forth the revelation of this intimacy with the Father that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in you. And so this is what he's praying as he goes to the cross, but actually we'll begin, we began a couple weeks ago in verse 13, but I want to begin in verse 1. Um, 
where that prayer begins. It says, and the, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And so what's he talking about here? How was he to be glorified? In the cross, the work of the cross. But he was one with the Father, so if he was glorified, the Father would also be glorified. And what was, you know, Lord's just been kind of releasing some things about glory and aspects of his glory and what his glory is and His glory is a manifestation, a revelation of, of himself, of knowing him. And so in Jesus asking him to glorify Christ, that he would be glorified, it's to make him known even more, even deeper in the fullness. And what was Jesus saying in the cross, you know, is this glory of your love would be manifested. The hour has come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. <coughs> As thou hast given him power, the King James says, but it's not the Greek word, word dunamis, it's the word exousia. As thou hast given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to his many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you. Mm -hmm. See this glory, it's about knowing, coming into this deeper knowing. So Jesus says, as thou, Father, hast given him, me, authority over all flesh, that I should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given me. When was he given that authority? Authority over all flesh. But see, this, this giving of this eternal life is going to come through the cross. He did not ha always have all that authority. He had to take back that authority that man lost when he was crowned with glory and honor. So that he became the corporate head of mankind, just as Adam was. Just as Adam was the corporate head, and when he sinned, it passed down through all mankind, Jesus Christ had to become corporate head so that he could die for all of mankind. That didn't happen until the Mount of Transfiguration, when he was crowned with glory and honor. He became the corporate head. This is what Paul speaks of in Hebrews chapter 2, which Paul is quoting from David, where there in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5, he says, uh, But one in a certain place testified, saying, speaking of David, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, gave him dominion over the work of your hands and to put all things under his feet. In that thou put all things under his feet, there was not anything put under his feet. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for every man. He had to be crowned with that glory and honor before he could taste death for every man. And where is 
where do we receive that crown of glory and honor? Where he had to live out of that place. I in him, him in me, one. David says in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 27, glory and honor are in his presence or, or are in his face. Glory and honor are in his face. Strength and gladness are in his place. See, it's when Adam was in him and him and they he was one with the father he was crowned with glory and honor but when it was he came out of the will of the father and the self he was no longer crowned with glory and honor and that word honor can also be translated beauty if you look at that word there in First Chronicles sixteen twenty seven. It's actually the same root word as, as used in the beauties of holiness. Because where is this beauties of holiness? Remember what Psalm one ten says that out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. Oops, I'm on the wrong. I jumped off onto Psalm 50 there. <laughs> Yahweh shall send forth. Well, it's, yeah, it's talking about similar, very similar things, of course, there. Psalm 110, though, says that the Lord or Yahweh shall send forth the scepter, he's talking about the throne, of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. <clears throat> thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. See, Melchizedek comes forth from this place. The beauties of holiness. And what is this beauties of holiness? Holiness, of course, is being set apart. What? To be one with him the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. It's coming back in to him, into mercy and truth, or we're becoming born again. And in this place, we create this beauties of holiness that becomes his sanctuary in this place of worship. It's flowing out of the revelation of his mercy and truth, but it's a worship that then he comes and rests there. And it's the beauties of holiness. You know, it said there in Psalm chapter uh, eight there that I recited there. Um, oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is your name. David's talking about the name which the Father <clears throat> said above all his name. All right, I'm going to go a lot of different directions here until I kind of pull this together, but what is in a name? who we are or who somebody else is, but also whose we are. 
who we belong to. So a wife that won't take her husband's name values the name of her father or her mother more than the name of her husband because of its prestige or, or whatever it may be. And so who do we belong to? Who, so there's the name. Will we see this whole thing about the name that Jesus, as we continue to go in, in John chapter 17, Jesus speaking of, I have declared your name. He said this over and over. Keep them in your name. What, what's that about? It's about identity coming into him. That whose we are knowing whose we are. We're no longer our own, we're his. This is becoming one is, this is the importance of that name. As I was thinking, Lord, what you're making such a, a you know, over and over he's saying about the Father's name. Why is he emphasizing this so much? That they may be one. Father, keep them through your name that they may be one as we are one. Okay, and in this name is mercy and truth. I in them, thou in me. Us in him, him in us. See, David in Psalm 118, where he says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endures forever. Let Aaron now say, the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endures forever. Let them that fear the Lord say that his mercy endures forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is at my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord will take my part with them. How's it going? That helped me. Therefore, I shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations compassed me about, but... In the name of the Lord, I shall destroy them. What does that mean? His identity came in to him. It's not just taking the authority, but it's, it's, it's that becoming your name. That we rule and reign with him. That we become one, a family, a family. In the name of the Lord. What? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. And in that name is mercy and truth. The coming into that full identity. They compassed me about, they compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They compassed me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns for in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. And of course, how did that Psalm begin? He's speaking of the mercy and then a little farther down, he speaks of the truth, the right hand of the Lord. In this name, Entering into this name, O oh, prepare mercy and truth which shall preserve me. If we would just fully lay hold of that and enter into the fullness. That 
his scepter comes forth out of us in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. See, David took the revelation of mercy and truth and then praise came forth out of that and the sanctuary was there. This was the house. The beauties of holiness were were being set apart to him. And the beauty of the Lord is coming upon us, resting upon us. Crowned with glory and honor, which could also be translated, some of the Hebrew words, crowned with glory and beauty. You know, that term in the beauties, in the beauty of holiness is used multiple times. What speaks of when the armies went forth, they worshiped him in the beauties of holiness. What does that mean? It's creating a place that he rests on. Okay, so something just came to me as in uh, Genesis, I think it's Genesis chapter 10, isn't it? Where uh, Jacob blesses the 12 tribes, the 12 patriarchs. And Judah, of course, he blesses. And in that he says that the scepter shall not depart out of Judah, nor the lawgiver between his feet or his loins until Shiloh come. And of course, at this point, I don't even know that Shiloh existed, the place Shiloh. Shiloh where Eli and and it became the center of worship for Israel before the temple in Jerusalem. Shiloh was that place. I haven't done enough research to even see see if it even existed at that point. But the Lord, the Father, I forget where it is now, speaks of really, I believe, what Shiloh means. He says, Shiloh is the place where I caused my name to dwell. It's the first place, he says, where I caused my name to dwell. I think this is very significant in understanding this. And so, who was that? That was Jesus that came and fulfilled Shiloh, the place where his name dwelt in him. That he was in the name of the Father. His name dwelt because he created that place. He abided in mercy and truth in the secret place and, and the worship and it dwelt there. The beauties of holiness. As Jesus said, I sanctify myself that you also may be sanctified by the truth. But the Shiloh, I believe, also speaks of us where his name is to dwell in the beauties of holiness as we create the worship. Of course, Shiloh was the place of worship, right? Where he causes his name to dwell. to come into his name, that in the name of the Lord. David came to Goliath in the name of the Lord. 
he didn't come as David. <laughs> so where it says there in Psalm 8, O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory. This Hebrew word can also be translated beauty above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. See, here it comes. Why out of the mouths of babes and sucklings? Because they still have a remembrance of that place. And as we come back into the womb, as we've come back into the womb a morning and come back into the room, out of this place, creating the beauties of holiness. Where his name rests. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man? That thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that those thou visitest him. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, thou hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou didst set him over the work of your hands, the work of your hands, mercy and truth. So this dominion really coming out as we're crowned with glory and honor. Jesus wasn't even crowned with glory and honor in the very, not until the Mount of Transfiguration was with the fullness. So coming into our full authority in him, as Paul says, but we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom all things and by whom all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare your name unto my brethren. Why? Why? This name, this name of love, that he's exalted above all his name, compassionate, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in mercy and truth, where this abundant life is, where this eternal life of knowing him intimately, me and him, him and me, which cause he is not ashamed to cause them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren, which of course comes out of quotation out of Psalm 22, which is what? The cross. And how does Psalm 22 begin? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of thy groin. I cried unto thee in the daytime, and thou hearest not in the night season, and am not silent as all the sin was placed upon Christ and he came out of that awareness, that consciousness so that he could make intercession. And then he tells us, how do we come back into that fullness of the consciousness? But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. 
not anybody's praise is Israel. Israel was to ascend to the throne. Israel is prince with God and man. As 1 Samuel 2 says, And I will set them with princes, the princes of my people, and they shall inherit the throne of glory. Where was I? Oh, Psalm 22. So you see there in Psalm 22, he's speaking about declaring this name again. What's in the name? Identity. Being in him. In this name where mercy and truth is. And he was going to perform the mercy in the work of the cross. Promised to the fathers. as he laid hold upon the horns of the altar there in Psalm 22. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn, speaking of, or the wild ox laying hold of the horns of the altar, calling out for mercy. Father, they know not what they do. And then he says, <clears throat> for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn. I will declare your name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. What's that? That's a praise of Christ coming forth up out of his people. All ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all ye seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. And then here's David saying, I will praise thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Then all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. Remember. Coming back into the womb and remembering that love. All right, so we'll go back to John 17. But it was a process in David coming into that place and being broken and coming to the end of his own strength coming to a revelation of the cross. Mm -hmm. John 17, where are we? As thou hast given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have made you known, Father. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thyself, with the glory which I had with thee before 
the world was. What glory was that? The lamb slain before the foundation of the world. That's the glory he had with the Father before the foundation of the world. Remember verse 1, he said, Glorify thou me, that thou may also glorify. What is that? That we can fully manifest this love. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that looked like before the foundation of the world, you know? (laughs) Glorify thou me with the glory which I had with you before the foundation of the world. For the world was, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and I have, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of you. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours and yours are mine. And I am glorified. I am glorified in them. You know, I said before, well, this could be Christ in you. He could be seen, but he was glorified in in them by the words that he had spoke and that were now in them. They kept that word. And now he's, he was glorified in them through the word which they believed. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, even as we. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. What's this about? Identity. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. He never came into his identity, did he? His identity in Christ, his identity in the Father. He certainly didn't remain. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Fullness of joy. In his face is fullness of joy. Mercy and truth go before his face. See his name here, declaring his name, and that name is mercy and truth. we come out of our own identity that we may be one I have given them the world your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but thou shalt keep them from the evil they are not of the world even as I am not of the world sanctify them through thy truth see they're kept in they're being kept in the name what's in his name mercy and truth their identity their identity in you. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 
As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which you have given me, I have given them. What is that glory? The glory of his word that manifested him. That manifested the love of the Father. The glory which you have given me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, not this kind of knowing. I and you, you and me, this is the knowing he's talking about. The world has not known you, but these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them your name and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them. and I in them. You know, as Paul said, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit. that we would become that dwelling place where his name dwells. Oh Lord, would you bring us to the simplicity of understanding, Lord, of revelation. That the King of glory would be fully manifested in us. We would set our affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For we are dead and our life is hid with Christ in you, Father. When Christ, our life shall appear in us, and shall we also appear with him in glory, that we would manifest you, Father. We may be one even as you are one. Thank you that we are one, Father.
May our words come into agreement with the truth. May our worship proclaim the truth of Jesus, the work that you finished. you drew us back into the hands of the Father into the womb of the morning that in this place we would create that sanctuary this large place to know this love Teach us what it means to abide in your name, Father. Amen.